Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello and welcome to this Nick from Top Notch Sports. Today we're over the Cleveland Browns salary review and offseason moves for 2023. Kevin Stefanski, Deshaun Watson, and the Cleveland Browns. 7-10 and 10 last season, finishing 4th in the AFC North. We all knew that Deshaun Watson wasn't going to be coming back until late in the season. So nobody really expected this team to be phenomenal. But when Deshaun Watson did come back, he did not look too great. And that's just me being from an outsider. I'm not claiming to be a Cleveland Brown expert. I'm not claiming to have watched every snap of the Cleveland Browns. I'm sure you Cleveland Brown fans have a uh, opinion on it. I would love to hear what you think in the comment section below. But as of right now, I could definitely say, for the looks of things, this team may have paid a little bit too much for Deshaun Watson. What Deshaun Watson can be is a great football player. We've seen that in his time in Houston. But what he showed, and again, he hasn't played professionally in a very long time now. But what he showed this season, you saw some flashes of greatness, but a lot of mediocreness. And I want to see what you guys think in this comment section below. If you're new to this series, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Um, and here we go. Let's hop right into this, and let's see what we got for this mock offseason. Every move I make, you're not going to necessarily agree with. But again, I want to hear what you think in the comment section below. Here we are. So first things first, the Cleveland Browns have $3.7 million in cap space. You see that in the top left corner of your screen. You look at the offense, you look at the defense. Not that bad. If you're new to this series, here we go again. The guys in green, if you cut them, you save money. The guys in red, if you cut them, you lose money. So what I want to ask you guys is, who do you think you cut? Who do you think you keep? Real fast for a quick example, if you cut someone like Amari Cooper, which I know you're not going to do, you save $8.6 million in cap space. If you were to cut someone like Miles Garrett, which I know you wouldn't do, you would actually lose $6 million in cap space. So the guys in red, you're definitely probably not going to get rid of. The guys in green, if you cut them, you might get rid of, but it's highly, highly, highly unlikely unless they're really not that good of players. Again, you look at somebody down here, Deshaun Watson. If you ever wanted to get rid of this dude, I've never seen a cap hit so bad in my life. $165 million the Cleveland Browns will lose if you were to move on from Deshaun, which you're not going to do. I'm just saying it's just a crazy number to look at. Let's look at the next slide. Now, again, the guys that are on this slide real fast are guys that are currently under contract for 2023. The guys on the next slide you're going to see are guys that need to be re-signed that are upcoming free agents. Here we are, here, here are notable losses. So first things first, again, you look at percent of snaps played. These are the guys, this, this number here is based on the amount of snaps that they play when they're actively on the game day roster. So let's start with Ethan Pokic, center. He's expected contracts, a four-year, $28.8 million deal. He played 91% of the snaps. The next guy, running back, Kareem Hunt. Expected contract, two years, $14 million. Played 43% of the snaps this season. Next guy, quarterback, Jacoby Brissett. Expected contracts, a one-year $5.4 million deal. Played 80% of the snaps. Next guy, defensive tackle, Dave and Bryant. Expected contracts, a three-year $20 million deal. He plays 63% of the snaps. Next guy, linebacker, Anthony Walker. He's expected contracts, a one-year $4.4 million deal. He plays 65% of the snaps. And last but not least, Deion Jones, linebacker. Expected contracts, a one-year $6.7 million deal. Plays 61% of the snaps. So again, a good rule of thumb here is, played a high percent of those snaps and have played well during those high percent of the snaps. They're typically players that the team is going to want to bring back. Let's go to the next slide. Here we are here. Okay. We got estimated cap space available. They got $3.7 million. Estimated cuts. We're going to cut Joe Haig. We're going to cut Kellamond. That saves $7.3 million in cap space. With that being stated, now we can finally bring back Ethan Pokic on a four-year $28.8 million deal which is a $7.2 million cap hit, which leaves us with $0.1 million or $100,000 left. You look at our team needs. You kind of need a running back, center, defensive tackle, edge rusher, and linebacker. Well, again, what are we going to do? We're going to fill in that center need by re-signing Ethan Pokic. And in the draft, we only got two picks. We don't have a first round because of the Sean Watson trade. So in the second round, we're going to bring in edge rusher Felix Anaduk Uzama. And in the third round, we're going to bring in defensive tackle Byron Young from Tennessee. Not the one from Alabama, the one from Tennessee. So that fills in our edge rusher need and our defensive tackle need. We still need to probably draft maybe a late-round running back, maybe if we want to. 
or a linebacker later in the draft in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, et cetera, et cetera. But right now, we're filling in the center need. We're filling in the defense tackle and edge rusher need. Now, again, you guys don't have a lot of money, so we couldn't really make a lot of moves because how little cap space you guys do have. So let's go to the next slide to look at our 2023 expected starters. Here's the final slide. Again, we got $0.1 million, $100,000 left in cap space that will roll over to the 2024 season. The guys in yellow are placeholders. These are the guys that I feel like they can be replaced or that should be looked to be improved upon within the, you know, the next season. Jordan Elliott, Tay Davis, Tony Field. Now, you guys know better than I do whether or not these guys should be replaced or not, but according to PFF grades and my own personal analysis, these are the guys you probably want to try to upgrade over if you can. With that being stated, the guys in orange, Ethan Pokic is a guy that was re-signed to this team, and the guys in light blue are your guys' draft picks, Felix Anaduke Uzama and Byron Young. For the most part, when I look at this roster and I look at this team under Kevin Stefanski, I think the Browns went from 7-10 and 10 last year. I think they can definitely improve their place in this division, and not only the place in the division, but also their overall record. You look at someone like Deshaun Watson, year two under Kevin Stefanski is only going to improve. You got a great offensive line with Jedrick Wills, Joel Bentonio, your bringing back Ethan Pokic, Wyatt Teller, and Jack Conklin. Your receivers, Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and David Bell, along with tight, a really good tight end, in my opinion, David Njoku, and one of the best running backs in the league, Nick Chubb, makes this offense one of the most potent offenses in all of football. You look at the defense. Between Miles Garrett, and now you got some young blood on this defensive line between Felix, Anadu, Uzama, and Byron Young. You got a pretty dang good secondary in Grant Delpit, Greg Newsom, and Denzel Ward. And you still got John Johnson. And then at linebacker, Jeremiah Uzakoromoa. This team all around is a pretty solid squad. I feel like their offense is going to have to score a lot of points still to, to be a potent team. If you want to make a strong push in the playoffs, this offense needs to click on all cylinders. This defense between Miles Garrett and the secondary, I feel like definitely can make key stops in the game. Overall, I feel like this team is going to improve the record probably to about around a 9-8 and eight to 10-7 and seven record next season. With that being stated, I feel like the AFC South, I mean the AFC North, I'm sorry, is going to be battling out between the Bengals, Ravens, Steelers, and the Browns. Nobody is going to be weak next season, especially if the Ravens bring back Lamar Jackson. With that being stated, I feel like the Browns will be in a battle to win this division with every other team in this division. But I feel like a 10 and 8, I mean sorry, a 10 and 7 record or 9 and 8 record may put them in that contention. And if they punch themselves into the playoffs, I feel like this team could win a game or two. With that being said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. We are built better.